Good morning. It is day two of our new school year. Today is the third day of school and it's also going to be the house sorting ceremony. And it's the last day of the first week of school. And I am already losing my voice. Good morning. It is day two of our new school year and right now I'm getting ready to sit down and put on my makeup because that's usually what I do. I don't do my makeup in the morning at home because we leave really early so that my son can get to high school early and avoid all the traffic, which we did find some traffic this morning because of construction. But right now I'm getting ready to do that. But before that, yesterday I received the cables for my document camera since I couldn't find mine. My dad helped me by buying me some replacement cables. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my document camera right now so these are the cables so this is the USB cable and this is the power cable so I'm just going to hook up our document camera and hopefully get it working so that we can use it today let me go ahead and do that now and I'll let you know how it goes I had also bought this little mystery Harry Potter figure and I haven't opened it yet so I'll open it on camera and I'll also do a speed through of me putting on my makeup because why not? I'm here, might as well set up the camera on a tripod and do it. So let me first do the camera, so hopefully it works, and let's get this done. All right, see you soon. All right, I got my cables hooked up. I definitely have power, so the AC adapter is working. This is the USB connection, so now we're gonna go to the computer and make sure that it works. So I'm gonna open my document camera app. All right, so it says a document camera is not connected. That's because I haven't turned it on. So now let's turn it on. Okay, now it's on. And, oh, I hear it. It's happening. Yes, we have a working document camera. Awesome. I love how it projects whatever you put here. So there's my hand. So now I can use it, we're good to go. Big thanks to my dad again for coming through and buying those cables for me. Yay, I'm so excited. All right, so let me go ahead and put on my makeup and we'll get going. Makeup is done, and I'm just trying to close my bag because I jam-packed everything in here, and for some reason, it doesn't want to close now, but I wanted to go ahead and open up the little Harry Potter vinyl figure. I think it's a vinyl. Oh, it's a collector's key ring. Oh, how cool. Maybe I can add it to my lanyard. That'll be really neat. I have someone knocking on the door, so hold on a second. Let me just open this up first. I need scissors. Okay, just got scissors so let's open this first and then we'll see who's at the door and i got <gasps> yes i got harry how awesome is this i'm most definitely gonna put this on my lanyard which is actually the hogwarts express my friend got it for me at universal and i really wanted harry and i just got him all right so these are the different characters that come and there's a mystery character and i got this at target in the section where they have all the trading cards so yay it's harry all right let me see who's at the door and i'll see you later because in about 20 minutes or so or 25 the students are going to come in so i want to do some last minute prep so i may see you during lunch if not at the end of the day and yeah i'm excited for day two so here we go
it is now lunchtime. We've had a good morning. The kids were working on their shirt activity. They're all about me shirts. This is my example. And basically they just follow the pattern that is provided here that says what they need to draw in each space. I've shared about this before in a previous vlog. This is by the imagination box, which I'll also link below again. And then I gave them the other shirt that they had to fill in information. This is my example. I still have to finish that last quadrant right there, but I was showing them how to set it up and they'll cut that one out as well. And we'll use it to decorate our classroom because I don't really like to put anything on my bulletin boards. I'd like to leave them plain so that the students work go up there depending on the subjects and things like that. So we did work on that for about an hour and I had to kind of give them an hour because we were waiting for other students to arrive because there were issues with construction that's happening on the way to school. And there were a lot of students and teachers that were late today because of that. So we did not penalize them for that. So I wanted to extend time to give them an opportunity to kind of try and catch up with what everybody was doing. They will finish that either tomorrow during do now or during catch up and pickles on Friday, which is fine. And then we started reading Chrysanthemum. And what I did is I went to Discovery Ed and I showed them the video. It's a 15 minute video of the animated version of the book, Chrysanthemum. So this is the video and it's animated. So they were able to see the, the whole story. She was born. So after we did that, we went over story elements because this week in our pacing guide, we need to start showing them about the elements of a story, story structure, whatnot. So after that, after we discussed what happened, how the character changed from the beginning of the story to the end, we decided to do, or I decided to do because I'm the teacher, right? But we created together as a class, a story elements tree map on the board. So check it out. So we went over the story elements, character setting and plot, and we split up the plot because it has the conflict and the theme. We also have the resolution in there. The setting is the where and the when, and that's important. I always stress that. And with theme, I always remind them the message and I box T-H-E-M-E -E for theme so that they're aware of that. And then we filled in the entire tree map so that they had an understanding of it. And I'm doing that because we haven't gotten into the Wonders textbook yet, which we will, but I'm still hitting the standards doing that. After that, we started reading The Name Jar, which is a book that I have mentioned before, is by Yan Suk Choi, and it's about a girl that kids start picking on her because of her name, similar to Chrysanthemum. Oh, and I forgot to go over this, one second. As we were reading Chrysanthemum, I had this paper of Chrysanthemum, the character, and every time someone was not nice to her or said something that was hurtful or mean, I either wrinkled her or tore her up. By the end, she felt better, but I tried to flatten her out and make her better. I even taped her up, and we discussed why did I do this, and they knew that it was every time somebody was mean to her, and I said, what does this show us? And basically, it's to let the kids know that words have power if you use hurtful words to someone, they may feel better later on, but that will always stay with them. Words have the power to either build us up or tear us down. So we have to be very careful with our words and how we treat each other. So that brought up a really good conversation as to kindness and our rules and the expectations that we have towards treating one another. So back to the name jar. So basically, similar to Chrysanthemum, they were picking on her because of her name. Yoon Hai was being picked on in the bus originally because of her name. And then she didn't really like her name at one point and wanted to kind of change it into an American name. So we're at the part where the kids are giving her more name suggestions and telling her that they put three more or that they suggested other names and so forth. So we're gonna finish reading it and then we're gonna talk about the story elements again. And then we're going to compare and contrast the two stories and see how they're similar and different. And this of course is related to their name research assignment that they have this week, it's due Friday. That is a social studies grade so yeah combining all these different things so right now it's lunch like I mentioned I'm just gonna go ahead and eat I have a salad today which I'll show you in a minute and yeah it's going great so after lunch I'm gonna finish the story we're gonna have a little conversation about that we're gonna show the vocabulary video of the five things the elements of a story and then after that we're gonna do some math and science and social studies lots of stuff to do day two here we go let me show you my lunch so here is my lunch, which is basically a spring mix salad with shredded carrots. This is Makoto's balsamic ginger dressing, and I'm adding to that the protein, which is tuna, lemon, sesame, and ginger, which is really good with this dressing, and for dessert, unsweetened applesauce, and of course my water. So let me go ahead and eat my lunch, and I'll catch you probably at the end of the day. 
So it's the end of the day now. And after lunch, we finished reading the name jar and we had a great discussion and we're able to compare and contrast chrysanthemum with the name jar and also look at the themes and what we can learn from them. So we had a great discussion with reading. After that, we did our M&M icebreaker activity, which I'll show you in a little bit what that slide looked like. I kind of showed it in the first day of school vlog but I'll show you again. And after that, we went ahead and we started on math and we were able to introduce the chapter one topic as well as go over the place value chart and I was able to assess how much they know now and help those students that needed assistance. And then we also went ahead and introduced the first topic in our science textbooks, along with having students take pictures in the classroom library holding props that they wanted to hold so I can have those for the end of the year. So that's great. Let me go ahead and show you that M&M icebreaker slide right now. So this is the M&M icebreaker slide that I kind of showed on the board for the students to use when they were randomly selecting an M&M out of their fun size bag. And we actually did two rounds of this. The students actually wanted to do two rounds, so it was fun. They got to share two little facts about themselves and I did write notes down because this is all part of me getting to know my students and building relationships with them. So I'm actually getting ready to leave now because I do have a doctor's appointment to get to and I will be taking my personality quizzes with me that the students filled out because I do need to get ready for tomorrow's house sorting ceremony, which I am looking forward to. So I can't wait to show you a little bit of glimpses of that and I can't wait to show you a couple of clips from that. Hopefully I get some nice little clips to include so you can kind of take a little peek into our house sorting ceremony. So that's what I'll be doing this evening, getting ready for that. So yeah, let me get going and and I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. Today is the third day of school and it's also going to be the house sorting ceremony. I have my robes on and ready to go and I can't wait to show you a couple of glimpses of that. But first, I need to let the kids in and get started on our day. So we'll see you later. Welcome to your house sorting ceremony. The personality quiz was not the only thing that determined which house you get sorted into. We have four main houses, and you will be sorted into one of these. Even if you don't think you belong in that house, there is a reason why you were placed in that house. So I don't want to see anybody being sad or upset or gloomy because you didn't get into the house you thought you wanted to be in. You understand? All houses, are great. All, houses. All houses have amazing characteristics. And I know you're trying to put them into where they fit into the Hogwarts houses, but you have to understand that all of these houses are very important. It's not like you're gonna get put in Slytherin. Exactly, you're not gonna be put in Slytherin. Slytherin is not represented. However, if you do have qualities of a Slytherin, if you are somebody that loves to be a leader, there are many different houses that have that. Leadership qualities can be used in any of those houses. Determination can be used in any of those Ambition. houses. Ambition too. You can be an ambitious person towards inspiring others. You have that ambition to create new ideas, or you have that ambition to lift other people up and give them a way to feel like they are accepted. You understand? You can have an ambition to do what is brave and courageous. You can have an ambition to do what is good in the world. You see that? So I don't want anybody to be upset into whatever house you're sorted into. So this is our house sorting ceremony, and it all starts with Aiden. Come right up. Aiden, huh? I sense in you great qualities. Yeah. You are brave, you're courageous, yeah. you love to lead, you're determined, yeah. you also like to help others, yeah. and you love to be daring. Yeah. I got it. I know where you belong. Yeah. You're an overall positive person, you work well with others, and you like to get along. I think I know exactly where to put you. Louis, hmm, yes, 
bright. I see that you are very brave and determined. You have an ability to lead, but I think we need those leadership qualities to best fit your new house in order to find solutions in many creative ways. That's why I'm going to sort you here. Luella, I sense in you many different qualities. You are brave, courageous, you are a leader. You are someone who does not fear anything in front of you. But there is something else in you that's even wonderful. You are generous, you're humble, you're kind, and you love to help others. That's why you belong here. as to how you can get together with your houses and what you can do. While I was sitting there, I was coming up with something for one house, and I will come up with something for all of the houses, but because of time, I was only able to come up with this one. I want to try to perform it for you. Mind you, I just wrote it, and I might need to tweak it, so I know it's not perfect, but at least it'll be something, right? So, <clears throat> River is in the house with a breath of inspiration. Boom, that's her mind with a burst of imagination. Yeah, here we go now. Yeah, here we go now. Feel a big idea growing in your mind. That's River's inspiration. We hope you don't mind. Oh, that's, good. Oh, that's it. It's just a little rap that means or represents something about your house. Okay, I will come up with one for you, Rafiki. I will come up with one for Valor. I will come up with one with Kalosini, and of course one for Hakima, because remember, you all also belong in Hakima. Hakima is the house of wisdom. Question. You can, yeah, I'll type it up and I'll share it with Rivera. The ones that I come up for the other houses, I'll also type it up and share with all of you. Okay, you don't have to use it, but you can use it as an inspiration, okay? Or if you want to start with this for now, and then you come up with your own, you could do that. All right, so it's the end of the day, and even though it's Wednesday and it's early release, the day feels like it was such a long day. As you saw from the little bit that I was able to show you, we did our house sorting ceremony and the kids had an amazing time. And then I gave them about 15 minutes to meet in their houses and kind of come up with a chant or a rap for them to perform on Friday. And you saw me perform that little rap for River, just to give him an idea. And I plan on writing three more raps, one for each of those houses. And yeah, I like rap and I like to rap myself and I write raps from time to time. So it's a lot of fun for me. It's something that I enjoy. I think it's important that they know that about me and they get a little bit of that from me because it's something that I like to do for fun as well. So I can't wait to see what they come up with for Friday's house spirit day where they will show their house spirit and see who gets 30 points for the house and everyone else will get 10 points. So we'll have one house that will show the most spirit. They'll vote themselves by clapping, not doing any other noise other than clapping. And then the other houses will of course get 10 points for showing house spirit as well. Other than that, we were able to read Oranges by Gary Soto, which was about a first time. And we did a little bit of poetry instruction with that, as well as going over imagery and similes and metaphors and all sorts of awesome things in that lesson. And it's such a simple lesson. And then they answered questions in the back. Some of them didn't finish, but that's okay because they can finish later on in the week. And then I went ahead and I read Jamie Lee Curtis's book, My Brave Year of First. I think I showed you that book in another vlog, but let me get it right now so that you can at least see the cover. And yes, I was wearing my robes They're right behind me. They're actually my friend's robes. He's letting me borrow them. They're, they're his daughter's robes, and they were so kind to let me borrow them. One day I'm going to get my own authentic ones from Universal, but... This is the book, My Brave Year First. And it's really great because it went along with the topic of first times and doing things. And also it went over growth mindset because she had to try and try and she didn't give up and the kids caught on to that. 
and they have to understand that some firsts are difficult and we have to just keep trying and not give up persevere so we did that and then tomorrow i'll piggyback on that so that as we are setting up our writing notebooks tomorrow they can write a little bit about a first time they did something or a first time memory so then we went to lunch and then after lunch we decided to or before lunch i'm sorry we were doing the florida symbols so let me show you i have a powerpoint that i just put together i just put photographs and different things about each florida symbol let me show you that right now all right, so this is the PowerPoint that I basically just put together. I put this together a couple of years ago and I use it every year at the first week of school to kind of introduce the kids to the Florida symbols. Since in fourth grade, they learn about their state. So they went over these different things. And right now I have it set to five seconds. It slides through, not like that the first time, but these are the different Florida symbols that we went over. And after they went over these Florida symbols, I asked them to look back at the PowerPoint, which I replayed by automatic timing. And they chose three Florida symbols that they thought were their favorites from the presentation and from what little we learned today about Florida. And then after they went over all of these symbols, they filled out a brochure that I'm going to show you right now. So this is the brochure that I also put together and basically they chose their Florida symbol. They wrote what the Florida symbol was at the top. They drew a picture about it and they need to write a sentence or two describing why they like that symbol. So they started working on that. They're not done. And this was my example and I'll eventually color it so that they can see my expectations for full color, full space that's given to you. So yeah, this is an instant bulletin board because once they're done, I'll put it up on our bulletin board and it's also a social studies grade. They also continued working on their All About Me t-shirts. I got this from the Imagination Box, which I'll also link down below. And I gave them this one where they created the drawings based on the topics that they needed to draw that says a little bit about themselves. And here they filled out information about themselves. So yeah, this is my example. And then eventually when they finish their examples, I'll put them up somewhere in one of these bulletin boards around the classroom. So yeah, that's basically what we did today. And the other thing that we did was we started setting up our math notebooks and they needed to dedicate their math notebooks. I'll show you my dedication because I think it was hilarious. I was just being funny. I was in that kind of mood. I was in a funny kind of mood. But here is the dedication. So basically, I dedicate this math notebook to all of the math problems out there looking for solutions because no one should go through life with that many problems. Get ready to meet your problem solver, me. <laughs> so after that, I'm going to put the guidelines here. I'm going to have them tape it or glue it. And they needed to write, I'm a mathematician. So explaining how they're a mathematician. Now to help them with that, because a lot of them can't really think of ideas, we said, you know what, this is like a writing assignment. It is a writing assignment. So let's go ahead and brainstorm how do we use math? So we came up with this. We did this together and they showed me all the different ways that they could use math or they use math. And they will use this as a springboard for getting their writing in their notebook about how they are a mathematician. And that was one of my previous students. They came into my room when I wasn't here and they left that. They also left something else. I'll show you. Yeah, I came into my room and immediately when I came in, I saw this projected on the board. They actually wrote this message and I want to put it on the blog because why not? They're so cute. All right, let me show you because this is awesome. Like I'm having a really great start to my year and I really love coming back to school and getting to see all my previous students as well. That's the benefit of being in a K-8 because they can go all the way to eighth grade and they'll still come back and say hello to me, but they wrote this. We love you, Miss Sanchez. Love Leo and Kennedy. Oh, thank you so much, Leo and Kennedy. I love you all too. You know that. And I so love that you left me that little note. It definitely put a smile on my face. All right. So that's basically what we ended up doing today. We didn't get to science. Hopefully we get to it tomorrow. I'm starting to try to set up one notebook a day with the kids. So today was math. Tomorrow we'll be writing. And on Friday, we might start with the science notebook and a little bit of social studies because we're going to be learning about the different types of social scientists, which gets me to, I finally finished setting up one of my focus boards on the side. So let me show you how that looks. So this is the focus board that's right at the entrance of the door. And here's where I list all their homework assignments for the subjects. I list the standards here, but this looks pretty crowded to me. So I'm going to do something about that. 
because yeah, maybe make the Florida Standards sign a little smaller and maybe make an array of two rows of three and maybe that'll be better. And here is where I write my essential questions. And I know this is different from last year because last year I only taught reading and language arts, but this year I teach all the subjects. So that's there. And yeah, those are all my little Funko Pops. They're so cute. And eventually over here, I will be writing my objectives and my agenda, which I haven't really written it because we're still trying to get into the groove of the school year. And I have to say it's Wednesday and I'm so, so tired. All I kept thinking in my head earlier was there's no tired like first week of school teacher tired. Although there are some other places that we do feel tired in the year, but that's basically what we did today. So I'm going to end today's vlog. And oh, the other thing I did was I changed their class dojo avatars into the symbols, the crest for their houses. And they thought it was like so cool. They never knew that you could do that in dojo. And a lot of the parents already started registering for dojo. And I told the kids, get your parents in so that they can see the pictures that we took yesterday and that we took today of the houses so i posted all their individual pictures they got to hold a prop from the classroom library area or anywhere in the classroom they got to either wear a robe or a hogwarts cape so that they can take their pictures so i posted all of those in class dojo and i also took a picture of all the house members together for each house with the crust projected behind them so i did that and i put that up there and i also have the pictures for the end of the year slideshow which is great it's been a great week so far a lot of things sometimes I feel like I'm not doing enough but I am and hopefully yeah we'll ha continue to have a great time for the rest of the week so I'm not going to end this vlog now I'll see you tomorrow Thursday and then eventually Friday so I guess this is going to be a four-day vlog all right so I'll see you tomorrow morning it is day four of the school year and this morning I just wasn't really in the mood for makeup so I'm just going natural today and I have no problem with that and I'm kind of feeling I don't know my mood I guess is down not sure what's going on I, I mean everything else is fine I love my class I love what I'm doing anyway I'm just gonna be easy on myself today and just do some self-care at the end of the day I'm not gonna plan to stay late today so that I can take care of myself maybe i just need to rest because i have been really really tired like i mentioned yesterday so right now i have been sitting in my room trying to plan out my day i think we're gonna have specials today and i think it's going to be music so we have music this morning scheduled from 10 to 11 so we'll see how that goes and I'll probably catch up with you during that time to kind of give you an update of what we ended up doing. So I'll see you later. All right, it's actually the end of the day. I didn't have an opportunity to talk during my planning because I had to go work out some things with our schedules again. And I also had to get some numbers for one of my teacher that needed textbooks. So I wasn't able to vlog. And then during lunchtime, I decided to just stay downstairs by the teacher's lounge because by the time I warmed up my food and came to my room and ate, I would have had to go down again. So I felt like I would have more time for lunch if I just stayed close to the cafeteria. I had a very good day with the kids. I feel a lot better than I did this morning. I think it's just because I'm tired. I'm also starting to lose my voice and I'm gonna have to try to let my voice rest as much as I can, but it's kind of hard because speaking is my job and I've been doing a lot of talking these past couple of days. So yeah, and I'm not used to all that talking because in the summer, we don't talk this much. I know that I vlog and everything and I talk, but we don't talk as much as I do when I'm back in school. But we ended up doing a couple things today. And sorry, I just came over to my desk because I just wanted to sit down. But we did catch up on a couple of the different things that the kids needed to do. We sort of, almost everyone just finished their science all about me, their math all about me. We launched the summer short story and we continued working in our notebooks for math on why we are a mathematician and how we are mathematicians and they reviewed the problems that we went over. So the lesson 1.1, they did problems to show me what they know to make sure that they understood it. 
So yeah, we did that. We didn't get to science today. So science is going to be my priority tomorrow to get to. And yeah, that's pretty much what I was able to do. And there's other things that I wanted to do in my lesson plans, but I didn't get to. But for the most part, it was a really good day. I really love my class. I am having a great time. And yeah, just being tired is part of coming back to school and getting back into the routine of teaching and all that stuff. That's all I have for you today. And you did see a couple of clips of the kids finishing off their Florida Symbols brochure. They're not done, but most of them have gotten to a point where they're done. Tomorrow we're gonna do catch up on pickles in the morning. So they'll catch up with all the work that they haven't done for the week. All right, so that's all I have for you now and I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, it is day five of the school year and it's the last day of the first week of school and I am already losing my voice. So I have my tea with me that I'm gonna to try to remember to sip through during the day. And I have some honey that I'm also going to take with that tea to help me kind of soothe my throat because I am losing my voice. It always happens at the beginning of every year. All right, I'm going to now go to my desk and put on my makeup and get some things ready for the day. And yeah, I have a lot of great things to do today with the kids. I planned it out, so I will show you again how I planned out my day for today. I kind of like planned it out. Like I have my lesson plans that are on a like weekly template, but I wanted to kind of plan out my entire day. So I was very detailed with that because it's the first time I'm teaching all the subjects again since two years and I wanna make sure I hit everything that I'm supposed to hit and get to every subject without taking time away from the other subjects. So let me go ahead and get my makeup on and then I'll give you a glimpse of what I have planned for the students today. Oh, but before I go, I wanted to show you my shirt for today. If you followed my vlogs last year, you know that on Fridays, I do my funky t-shirt Friday where I wear a graphic tee or a fun t-shirt. So I am wearing my Ravenclaw shirt. And this is a shirt that I got from Amazon and I really love this shirt, so yay. And it's also like my brand colors, so I'm very happy with that. All right, so let me go ahead and do what I just said I was gonna do, and I'll see you later. All right, so it's actually now the end of the day. I wasn't able to vlog during my planning time or my lunch time. Lunch time, I stayed downstairs again so I wouldn't waste that much time coming up and then coming back down to pick up the kids from the cafeteria. They did go to their specials today, so that was good. And 
at the end of the day, the kids were able to meet with their houses and do their chants and so forth. They're going to actually redo them on Monday so that we can actually vote on who had the most house spirit. Now, while they were doing that, I finished the other raps that I wanted to write for the other houses. I had already written one for River, which you probably saw already. And I went ahead and I wrote one for the other houses. Let me show you what I came up with. So this is the one for River. I may tweak it a little bit. I think I have to revise it because the timing and the rhyme sometimes don't match. Here is Yurafiki. Here is Valor. And here is Kalosini. Now, I want to eventually add these to my house sorting guide resource as an addition to it. So that would be really cool if you are looking for a rap or a chant or something to have your students get started so that they know what to kind of present on House Spirit Day. You have something like this already. Now, the rest of the day, we were able to stay on schedule and do a lot of the stuff that I planned. So let me show you. Let me see if I can find my paper because, oh my goodness, my desk is a mess. Well, let me show you. Here is the aftermath of the first week of school papers and papers and tons of papers. This is work that the students have completed throughout the week and I still have all those supplies that I need to put away and I still have that corner that I haven't even organized. But I'm not even gonna stress it because the kids had a great time, I had a great time. Yes, I'm losing my voice and it's all good. And let me show you if I can find it. Let me find it real quick. I found it, here it is. I don't know if I showed it yesterday or not, but I created this to-do list. I basically have my lesson plans here, but I needed more details. So we did do all of this pretty much. There's just a few students that need to finish maybe the summer shorts and two students that need to finish their Florida symbols. We did all of this. This was a really great reading lesson. I even added an extra thing because I had like 10 minutes left. So we did a reflection. They were mostly finished with their summer shorts. I still have a few kids I need to finish. They finished that, well, except for two kids. And on the back, we went to lunch. We went to, actually, we went to music because they changed it yesterday. So we went to music again. This time they had a new music teacher, so that'll be the music teacher that I have for the year. These are the standards that I'm going over in math. And we did that, we did that, and the rest we'll finish setting up next week for math. We didn't get to do science because I wanted to give the houses enough time to meet because it is Friday and they were expecting that, they were looking forward to that. So on Monday, we're gonna be really working with science and setting up our science notebooks, which the same thing that I did with the little, which you saw the clip, we did a little brainstorming of mathematicians and what mathematicians do or who they are and they did a little speech bubble. And I did get an inspiration from something that I saw on Pinterest. And I couldn't find exactly where it was from, so I created my version of it. So the same thing that I showed you of the mathematician example in the notebook, I also created one for science. So this is one that we will also do next week when we set up our science notebooks and a whole bunch of other stuff that we just didn't get to do this week. And I have someone at the door. Let me just, um, <laughs> hold on, let me finish off. And uh, yeah, so a lot of things we didn't do this week, we'll just go ahead and do next week. And that's basically all that I did for this week. I hope you enjoy coming along with me on my first week of school. I'm actually getting ready to go meet some teachers right now at Chili's to celebrate that woof, we survived the first week of school. So let me go ahead and do that and rest up my voice for the weekend as well so that on Monday I have a voice to speak with. All right, so I hope you enjoy coming along with us on our first week of school. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day and don't forget to smile. I'll see you next time.